In this video, I'll show you how I make a veil disc. It's a modern take on a traditional veiling technique uh, that adds a really cool detail to any basic percher or cocktail hat. There are multiple ways of doing it, I suppose, but this is how I accomplish my veil discs. As you can see, it's basically just a wire hoop connected by a joiner uh, with veiling folded over it. And one of the big problems that I had trying to figure this out was how to create the cylinder of veiling to go over the hoop. And I'm going to show you how I accomplished that. We will, however, need some basic supplies. And you probably have a lot of these already if you're already making hats, but um, let's just go over some of the basics. You'll need a rotary cutter and mat. You'll need a Teflon sheet and or parchment paper. I'll be using both for this project. We'll also need standard 9-inch Russian veiling. It's called Russian veiling, although I, I don't even know that it's specifically Russian. But um, it has uh, two finished edges on the width, and then you can buy it by the yard. Um, this is standard. This is nylon. It's not that expensive. It's 2 $3 a yard, depending on where you get it. And um, it comes in a multitude of colors. So I'm going to be using white because I had a lot of white available. And, uh, but I'll show you how to deal with a color if you want to. This is also a standard quarter inch grid. Uh, there are other grid sizes you can get out there, but um, you'll just need to experiment with what works best for your design. You'll need a pair of standard scissors, a pair of wire cutters, uh, locking pliers. You can use regular pliers, but I prefer locking pliers for this. You're going to need a number 19 millinery wire, which is a steel wire with a rayon wrapping on it. You can use thicker, but don't use thinner. We're going to need a standard number 19 uh, metal joiner. Uh, you're going to need some clear or white tacky glue. And you're absolutely going to need fabric fuse. This is the only glue I have found that works for this technique. It has to be fabric fuse um, for my use. I mean, if you can find another glue that does the exact same thing, go for it. But this is the one I know works. You'll need a permanent marker in the color of your veiling. Uh, just some basic sewing pins. A iron. I use a mini iron for this because it's easier to navigate, but a regular iron will work. Uh, you just got to be more careful. Uh, you'll need a sleeve board or something with an open edge to it to press on. Um, I made this one, but any basic just over-the-counter sleeve board will work. But if you don't have one of these, that's okay. You can still do this. You can use a towel. This is just any, this is an old craft towel, but just roll it up nice and tight. That way you can use it as a bolster for pressing. You will also need a standard sewing needle. I prefer a millinery number nine, but a regular sharp will work and any basic sewing thread. To start off, we're going to make the wire hoop. And um, with nine inch Russian veiling, you can make a hoop that is about 14 inches wide. Now, we're basically folding the veiling over in on itself. And standard nine inch veiling would be technically four and a half in the middle. Now what we're doing with the disc is we're pulling all of the veiling towards the center. So if you have a, um, a nine inch disc, you'd think that four and a half would be perfect. But the problem is it's actually too long because veiling stretches. Once we get the fusing done and we create our veil cylinder, I'm going to show you how to physically measure the veiling to get the correct depth for your disc. And this will make way more sense once we get it done. Uh, but first, I'm going to show you how to join two wire pieces together. So cut the wire, which is, comes on a bale, so it's already in a circle, the length that you want. And um, you're going to see that the core uh, the metal core on the inside is covered by two layers of rayon wrapping. Uh, so I'm going to take off the first layer, which you just pull, and then I'm just going to cut that off. You can cut it flush against the wire. Now I'm going to also take a little drop of tacky glue, and I'm going to cover that end in tacky glue. And it's just a little drop. It's not too much. And what this does is it just prevents further fraying, uh, because sometimes millinery wire can get a little fuzzy. And it, the, the glue, you just wrap it on with your fingers and um, you just kind of smooth it out. Then we're going to insert the wire into the joiner. And joiners have like a little metal, uh, it's like a fold. It's like a little metal tube with an opening in it. And that opening becomes important later on 
uh, when we start to crimp it because we want to flatten that to make sure that the wire doesn't pop out. Some people don't crimp. I prefer to crimp because I do think that it uh, it does give a little bit more stability. So you're basically just taking the other end and putting it in. There can be a little gap in between, but um, you you really just want to get the wire in as, as, as much as you can. I'm working on scraps for the demo here, but uh, you would just do this with your wire hoop. Okay, The locking pliers, then you're going to apply pressure to this uh, where the fold, where that little opening is, that little envelope, and I'm just doing this to show you how to do it, but um, do as much pressure as you can because you really want to crimp that bead to where the wire is secure in there. Also remember that because we're making this disc, the wire will be exposed. So if you're working with a colored uh, veiling, you need to use a permanent marker at this point to color all of your wire as well. This is how I measure the veiling I need for the size of the, of the hoop that I've made. Um, I just lay out some veiling and then I roll the hoop um, from the joiner around until I get back to the joiner. Now also when you do this you want to cut a, a little bit extra veiling. You don't want like five or six inches but you want like at least a half an inch because of how we have to trim it to get it to fuse correctly. So uh, when I do this, I always give myself just a, I mean like just a little bit, no more than half an inch. Uh, it's better to have the veiling tighter on the hoop than looser on the hoop, and you'll see why in a minute. So we have to prep our edges of the veiling once we have our length cut. And you'll see here that, um, I just cut this sort of jagged so you can see exactly what's going to happen with it. But um, what we want to do is we want to find a row of dots that is touching the finished edge of the veiling. So like where I'm pointing right now. Don't use the ones that are floating in the middle. Uh, that's not going to give us enough of a um, an edge to work on. So we're going to be working, we're going to be cutting past the one that is um, touching the finished edge. And uh, we're going to trim that up and make sure everything's nice and even. That way when we fuse we have a beautiful straight seam. I'm using a rotary cutter and mat to trim off the excess past the straight line of dots. So um, you basically, you don't want to cut the dots themselves, you just want to cut everything past the dots on both ends of your length of veiling. So you want a nice smooth straight line like that. And I think I have a little fuzzy right here that uh, if you have a little fuzzy sticking out past the dots, go ahead and trim that off. That way uh, you don't have any little stray hairs poking out. Um, you want a nice clean edge. I've laid the Teflon sheet on top of my pressing surface and I've just pinned it down so it doesn't slide around. And uh, I have taken, what I'm going to show you here is how it's going to line up. Basically we're just taking the two, and I'm just using scrap for the demo, but I'll show you how to lay it out if you're doing a cylinder. Uh, you're just going to take the two ends and you're going to sort of match them up against one another and make sure that you have the same number on both edges. But you should because you cut it correctly. When you do this, you're going to be working in sections. So I like to do two or three dots at a time. Um, don't try to do the whole line at once. It will never work out correctly, believe me. So here's just a close-up. I have pinned the veiling down to the work surface away from the edge I'm working on. And we're just going to line these up to make sure everything's going to go the way it is. And the next step is basically we're going to just put little dots of glue on here and um, get it to where we can uh, get the fusing going. So with this, just a little drop of glue, just a dot. You don't need a glob of glue. In fact, we're going to be taking most of it away. Uh, you just need a little drop, probably the size of the dot, on top of... Uh, a few of these dots at a time. And again, I think I do like three or four of them. You can do three or four at a time. Seriously, don't try to do the whole line at once. It will not work out. So a little dot on each uh, veiling square. Then I'm going to smash down the glue with my finger. And this glue is non-toxic, so it's fine. Um, and what this does is it just pushes it through the fibers. Now I'm going to move the veiling. I'm going to wipe off my excess. You have to, otherwise you'll get a big old mess. And then I'm going to align the other side of the veiling on top of the dots I just applied glue to. And you can use a little chopstick or your finger just to press them down. I'm just using my finger here. 
Now, I'm also going to put some pins on the other side of the veiling, again, just to hold it in place. And make sure that when you pin, you're pinning away from your line. That way, your iron can still get in there. And this is why I like using a mini iron for this. Take your time and align the dots. This is I'm working away from myself for the camera because I have to get a better view. So my dots might not be perfectly aligned, but take your time, work close to it, and get them aligned perfectly. Take a little piece of parchment paper, and uh, this just protects your iron and the veiling. And then you're going to apply cotton setting, no hotter than cotton setting, and just for 15 seconds, hold it over the dots. Once it's cool, don't peel this when it's hot. Make sure it is cool. It only takes a few, just a couple of minutes to cool. You can blow on it. Um, you're going to remove the pins, and you can see that uh, once this is picked up, and just scrape off any excess that got stuck to the mat, and this glue yields a very strong bond. And you can see that I'm just going to like try to pull it apart. And it's not going to come apart. Now, you can, of course, strong arm this apart if you had to. Uh, but you won't need to with this project. Now, as you continue down the line, it might be difficult to work with parchment and an iron. But you can just cover your iron in parchment and do one step instead of having to do the other. Um, I don't just because it's easier to do it the other way for me. But, you know, do what works for you. And what you get in the end as you go down the line is a bonded seam. You can see where the seam is because the, um, the little squares are overlapped. and It makes it a little bit darker, but it's not as noticeable as you think. And it's a very strong bond. So as long as you've pressed for 15 seconds over like two or three dots at a time, you're good to go. You'll use the same technique for colored veiling. The only difference is that the glue does tend to, when pressed with an iron, dry white. And um, sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's white, depending on the color you're working with. But you can see that the, it, it is white glue as it's applied. And um, as we bond this, what's going to happen is when it dries with the iron, it's going to go a little bit translucent rather than clear. So in order to fix this, I have a very simple solution that is used by a lot of milliners. So don't think for one second this is cheating. Make sure you have a permanent marker, the color of your veiling. And you're just going to cover up the white glue. Uh, you don't like drown it in this, but I'm basically just tapping the surface to get the marker on there and immediately it just dissolves into the color of the veiling. So it really does help to have um, a bunch of colors of marker. That way you can use whatever veiling color you're using and just let it dry and you're good to go. To create the cylinder we need for the veil disc, just slip the veiling length in between the opening of the sleeve board or um, in just a second, I'll show you how to do it with a towel. And this will allow you to create a tube. And you follow the exact same process, doing two or three at a time, matching it up, and going along the seam. Now, if you only have a towel, and again, you can still do this if you have a towel. Just lay the towel down, lay down your Teflon sheet or parchment paper, and do the process this way. Take your time, align your dots, fuse properly. You'll get a beautiful tube of veiling that you can use for multiple projects, but now we're going to turn it into a veil disc. So you need to insert the loop of wire into the cylinder of veiling. And I like to line this, the fused seam up with the joiner because it makes it easier in the long run to hide uh, behind trims and stuff like that. So uh, just you might need multiple hands here, but you're basically just going to put the loop inside the tube of veiling, and you want to get it relatively close to the center, um, but we're going to be adjusting this in a little bit. Once you have the hoop of wire in the middle of the veiling cylinder, what you're going to do is push up one end into the center. And this will help hold the veiling in place and hold the um, wire hoop in place.
Now we need to get the hoop um, of wire a little bit lower in the veiling, so I'm just kind of shaking it down. And what this is going to do is we need to estimate how much veiling we need from the hoop towards the approximate center of the circle, which would be the radius, I suppose. And um, just by kind of adjusting it by hand, uh, this makes it easier to figure out than trying to do it mathematically because remember, the veiling does stretch. That's why I don't measure. It's just easier to do it this way for me. Um, and this is also why we fuse the entire length of veiling because we just don't know exactly how much we're going to need. This doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be approximately close enough to the center of the circle. Now what I'm doing here is aligning the seam. And why I do this is because what we want ultimately is for the grid of veiling to lay over itself, looking like one relatively close to one layer of veiling rather than folded, veil, uh, folded layer of veiling. And in order to do this, we need to line up that back seam. So it's actually really good to have it. It's a little darker. We can immediately tell where it is. You can see it a little better against the table. And you can see how when we aligned this, we now have a nice smooth grid that will, it'll be easier to control it once the disc is complete. The next step is gathering the edge. And you'll notice we have excess sticking up. Leave it there, don't cut it off, not yet. So uh, thread a needle with double sewing thread and not the end of the thread. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through both dots that have been lined up. So um, make sure that you have a needle going through both dots. It's important that you go through both layers of veiling here, otherwise this just won't work. So you're gonna go up through the top edge, you're gonna go down to the next dot set, and you're gonna go through both of those. And you're gonna be gathering in like a little chevron pattern. So up, down, up, down, up, down, along that finished edge of the veiling that is the length we need from the wire to the approximate center. And you're gonna do this uh, all the way around until you get back to the end. And just take your time and make sure that you, as you go, line up the grid. And you can see it here, like as I'm gonna go through it, make sure that you create that grid and you're gonna go through both layers of veiling through both dots to create the gather stitches that we'll need in just a few minutes. Now also, this excess, do not cut it off until I tell you to. It will be way more difficult if you cut it off now. For this example, I'm using a contrast color thread, but please, if you're doing this in real life, make sure you're using a thread color that matches. Once you've gotten all the way back to the beginning, what we're gonna do is cut off the excess now. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to leave it on while you're sewing it rather than try to fight those two raw edges together. Um, so uh, go ahead and just start clipping above the stitching. Do not clip your stitching, otherwise you're gonna have to re-sew everything. You can save these little strips of veiling and use them as filler behind other trims on hats and you really don't have to waste it. Okay, now you can easily see what's gonna happen next. We're gonna gather the center of this and it's going to form the veil disc. And because we were careful and we aligned everything to start off with, we're gonna get a nice, pretty, sort of circular grid pattern, for lack of a better term, um, radiating from the center of the disc. And um, you can see here, I'm just sort of like taking my time to pull the thread. Don't yank it too, too hard. Otherwise, you might snap your thread. But just take your time and get it to where you've gathered the center. And look, you can see how beautiful those uh, lined up grids are. And it gives you this really kind of cool swirly pattern as you go along. You can also just use your fingers a little bit and kind of uh, sort of fudge it into place if it's off uh, center. But at one point, like some of the curves, you won't be able to align it perfectly, but it'll be, um, it'll be noticeable that you did take your time to get it correct.
Okay. Now, sometimes you might have a little bit of a, uh, rippling in the center because it, you just didn't get the measurement correct uh, to get it to the center, and it might be a little loose in the center, and that's fine. You can correct it this way. You don't have to do this step. It's completely up to you, but um, sometimes, depending on the, if you're doing a really large veil, you might need to do this, uh, but if you're doing a small one, I, you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. You're basically going to go up about a half an inch away from the stitching line you did before, do a little knot, and then you're going to just weave the needle over and under, not catching any, any specific rows or anything like that, just over and under, over and under, weaving the needle through the veiling. And all this is going to do is give you a second row of stitching. And... Um, uh, to gather, to pull the gather with. And when you do this, you can pull it in even tighter on the edge. Now, don't pull this super tight because at one point you could pull it and the strength could actually pop the, um, the bonded squares that are on the edge of the wire. Uh, so just don't pull too, too tight. In fact, like I said, you don't even have to do this because of the next step I'm going to show you. You can kind of correct it as you sew it to your foundation. Once you get to um, the end of your sewing and you did pull in the gathers, you can see that it does sort of it does clean up a little bit on the outside edge. But again, do not pull super tight because if you do, you can warp the wire or, like I said, pop one of the bonded squares. And to finish, just do a knot in the center to secure the thread. Now this next step is uh, attaching it to the base or whatever you're going to put it on. So this is just a little cocktail base that I've had as a sample. It's just an example when I used it in the feather video I did earlier. Um, and it's a little dome. And basically what I do is I just center it in the middle of this veil. I think it looks best in the center. It's the same dome I used for the pink hat in the, in the beginning. And you can put this anywhere you want as long as you cover up those stitches. Or, I mean, if you don't want to cover up the stitches. It's your hat. Uh, so I just put it in the center. And because it is a dome, like we, like I said in the other step, you didn't really have to do the second row of gathering because what you can do is just sort of push it into a little bit and pin it in place. And what that does is it takes up all the excess um, slack that you didn't get if you um, that all the excess slack that you got if you did not uh, measure correctly for the center. And I just pin it around the edge. And um, then I just do a quick whip stitch to catch the veiling to the, um, in this case, it's cinema or whatever foundation you're using. And you're just going to do a little whip stitch. I'm not going to actually sew it because, I mean, how you put your hat together is your business. But um, I just do a little whip stitch to hold it in place. And you'll also notice that my hand is gripping um, across the veiling. This is why I don't typically do giant uh, veil discs because it's they, they get way more difficult to hold. So I just do small ones that are the, the length of my hand that I can actually sew it. But yeah, just do a little whip stitch just to hold this in place. It's basically just a baste. And then you're going to take the other part of the, um, the block that's going to cover it. And when you sew these two together, you're going to use a stitch that goes uh, on to one side and then the other through the veiling. So it's going to be in matching thread Hopefully, I mean, I don't know what you're using, but, um, and what it's going to do is it's going to lock the veil disc in place and you're going to stitch it however you would normally stitch it in this case. And again, this is the example for this particular block. You might have a different block that you might have to do a different application. So, you know, just experiment with what works well for the block you're using. Um, you can even sew these things to the outside and then cover it with like a brooch or something. Now, you'll also notice on this that, again, the joiner is exposed, and you can see where the seam is. It's not that big of a deal, uh, at least to me, but if you need to, what you can do is take your trims, and this is why I put the joiner and the seam together, because you can hide them completely behind trim, uh, like I did with the pink hat and the cinema knot. Well, that's it for Veil Discs. I hope you enjoyed this video. Look for future millinery videos coming soon.